Welcome to the author's studio to Alan Jacobson. Alan began his career as a chiropractor, manipulating people's bones. I'm pretty sure now he's just as adept at manipulating readers' minds. You're going to find a lot of interesting things that he has to say. Be persistent. This is a very tough business and you have to be prepared to accept rejection, failure, uh, both in the process of submissions to agents, publishers, but also in, in the process of writing too. Not everything that you write every day is going to be perfect. You're going to revise, you're going to rewrite, and don't be afraid to throw something away. Oh, that is a terrible question, Peter. Uh, it's like choosing amongst your children. Um, I'll answer this question by telling you my wife's favorite book of mine, and that would be Inmate 1577. Uh, it's a Karen Vale novel set in San Francisco and on Alcatraz. I like it too, uh, but I have so many that I just love that I, I wouldn't be able to choose. I have an office in my house. Uh, it's pretty big, it's about 400 square feet. Uh, it's got a lot of windows and uh, two desks. One desk has my writing laptop. It's a sit-stand arrangement, so I don't kill my back. And uh, yeah, uh, I alternate between sitting and standing, and, and that desk is only for writing. Huh, that's a little tougher, because it was actually an English teacher who inspired me uh, to be a writer. Uh, he was my, my junior high school English teacher. I had him for two years. I was very fortunate. And uh, he really turned me on to the beauty of English and the, um, the enjoyment of the English language. And that's when I knew I wanted to study English. And that's when I went to college and got my uh, English degree. He was the reason for it. Uh, so that I wouldn't say it was a book per se, uh, per se but this uh, teacher. Other than dark chocolate, um, I would say photography. Uh, There's also a creative aspect to it, but um, I get a lot of enjoyment and relaxation in composing things through the lens. You know, each day is a little different. Uh, it starts off, if my day starts off with a, an email from my editor or my agent or, you know, somebody back in New York that's three hours ahead of me, uh, I get to my desk and I have to hit that right away. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a ritual, but uh, my writing usually happens later in the day because there's just so many things that need to get done, including research. A lot of times there's follow-up that I have to do relative to the research that I'm doing because even though I start off by doing a few months of research before I start writing, even while I'm writing, there's follow-up research and fill-in research that needs to be done. So. All these things happen, and then finally, I can get to the part that I really love, and that's the writing. I always loved English and writing. Um, I never thought I would be an author. And the funny thing is that when I told people that I was going to be uh, an English major, uh, people said, well, what are you going to do with an English degree? And I really didn't have an answer for that. They said, do you want to teach? I said, well, no. Uh, but I loved chiropractic and I was helped by a chiropractor when I was 14. So that seemed like the, the logical thing to do for my career. It wasn't until that I had an injury eight years later that I had to stop practicing and then it was like, now what? Well, it was pretty obvious. I mean, I loved writing, uh, I had the training, so I started writing and I, I've not stopped since. That's 22 years ago. Uh, it's a very elaborate process. Um, the idea comes to me at some point, usually while I'm writing the book that I'm working on. Sometimes it will have been uh, a, an idea that I came across while doing research for another book, and it percolates. It stays in my mind and, and keeps coming up. Uh, I write as much as I can. When I have that brainstorm idea, I put it aside. It keeps popping into my head from time to time, and then I start outlining it. As I start outlining it, I realize the research that I need to do, and then I see who amongst my contacts knows the information that I need to have. And I go about setting up meetings. Uh, sometimes some of my books are set overseas, so I have to set trips to go to 
you know, wherever they may be, England, France, uh, Amsterdam, Israel, I mean, they've been all over the place, as well as in the U.S. So I have to then see what trips I have to take and plan those out. And then once I get all the research done, which usually takes a solid three months, uh, then I can start writing. And that's, you know, the outline's already done at that point, and I can write uh, for the next several months. Where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> um, early in my career, it would be news. I'd look at the news to see what could be interesting. Uh, as I've moved through the past 22 years of writing, sometimes I can't explain where the things come from. It's an idea that just pops into my head. Uh, inmate 1577 that I talked about before, I walked into my office and I said, Karen Vale on Alcatraz. I don't know why I had that thought, but I thought, wow, that could be very cool. And then the rest of the story started to fall into place. Uh, there, are, there are news events that happen, but usually it's, um, it's just an idea that I had. I, I woke up once with an idea and I recorded it uh, you know, on my iPhone. I just recorded the idea and it became uh, you know, a terrific novel. My mo wife said to me once when we were in bed, as we were falling asleep, she said, what if, I had this idea, what if, and then she said one sentence, I woke up three hours later with the entire idea in my head. I pulled out a, a notepad in the dark and I wrote 12 pages and that became the general outline for Hard Target, which came right. out a few years ago. Thank you, Alan Jacobson. Lots more to come on The Author's Studio.